Hi again and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about, we're going to have three videos talking about rhetorical considerations. Okay. Uh, the first one is audience. I know every time you rode in high school, they always tell you, know your audience, know your audience. Well, <clears throat> that's very important because you wouldn't write uh, something to a middle school child and use the same words and phrases as you would say to uh, a technical uh, law firm or something like that. So knowing your audience is very important. And most of you, uh, the teacher always told you, well, I'm your audience, write to me. Uh, and that's true to a certain extent. That's more of a specific audience, but rhetorical audience, uh, there are only three. And uh, each of those audiences affects uh, or has an effect on how you write your, your essays. So let's start with the first one. You need to put these in your notes, okay? The first rhetorical audience is what we call um, a naive audience, okay? Uh, you can imagine they don't know anything about your text. They don't know anything about your subject. Uh, and how, how does that affect your writing? Well, it will probably um, force you to use more summary, more explanation. So you will see a lot more of that when you're writing to a naive audience, okay? Um, the second audience is a more, we'll call it questioning audience, okay? Um, they, You can assume that they understand your text. They have an understanding of it. They even understand maybe your subject, but they have questions, okay? So a questioning audience, uh, how does that affect your writing? Well, you might have to use a lot more counter argument, try to figure out in your mind what their questions might be um, and try to anticipate those and answer them more. You don't need to use as much summary um, or explanation. Uh, we might need some explanation when you're answering uh, an, a perceived or anticipated question. Uh, so remember, the first naive audience, you're going to need a lot more summary because you can assume they don't know your, your text, um, especially most of you are doing artifacts from the 50s. So the, a modern audience might not be familiar. So you might have to explain a lot more. A questioning audience, you need to anticipate their questions, use counter arguments. Uh, and the final audience is what we call a hostile audience, okay? That, imagine that as an audience that understands your text, understands your subject very well, understands what you're saying, but completely disagrees with you. And I know you might have a hard time imagining that kind of audience, but if you think about, it, there are certain subjects that are very polarizing and, <clears throat> you know, they can understand each other's arguments, but they completely disagree, usually based on values. And that's one of the things we've been talking about this semester. Say, for example, you know, right to life versus right to choice. Um, people have very strong opinions on both of those. So if you're making an argument uh, or making an essay about that, how does that affect your writing? Well, you're going to use a lot more techniques of persuasion. Uh, and I'm sure you studied those in high school. That's where you can use like statistics. You can appeal to their logic. Um, you can appeal to an authority, but the most, the most, to me, powerful appeal that you can make is an appeal to emotions. Like, for example, uh, I could give you a statistic on the number of people who die from drunk driving accidents or whose deaths are caused by drunk driving accidents. And that might be persuasive in convincing you that we need stricter drunk driving laws. Or I could show you a picture of, a, uh, of a, a teenage girl and say, you know, this is Betty. Betty uh, was on the cheerleading team. She was, you know, she read to blind orphan dolphins on the weekend. I mean, she was a great person. She had a scholarship to go to college. Her life was just beginning. And then suddenly, bam, she was killed in a drunk driving accident. And this is why we need stricter laws. Okay, that's an emotional appeal. Those make you feel a lot stronger about maybe listening to the argument or even considering a way of looking that that's not typically how you would see that subject. Okay, 
So you have your specific audience, which is, for example, if I'm specifically writing to uh, make political change, um, that might be a hostile audience, but specifically it might be a senator or, or a, a Congress or a political party. So you have your rhetorical audience and you have specific audience. And that's the difference between the two. The rhetorical audience is gonna be one of those three. And depending on which of those three it is, it affects your writing in a certain way, okay? So uh, hopefully you understand rhetorical audience. And next up, we will have purpose.